As you can see, I already started cutting these off, but uh, I figured uh, since I'm hanging out here today, might as well do a, we'll do a, we'll call this a coat and chat. Coat the wheels and chat with you. I kind of have a lot going on. I haven't been uh, making so, too many videos. All the videos have been uh, car specific, so I haven't been doing a lot of uh, just sitting there yapping at you. A lot of them have been very product and or project specific, I guess you could say. So it's been raining like crazy, so it's almost pointless to wash the car. Uh, so I haven't been uh, doing washing chats or washing talks. So we'll call this coat and talk or protect and something. Can't think of anything with a P. So anyway, this is, I'm gonna just sort of talk you up and go through this. I realized I was over here working on this and I'm like, man, I'm kind of bored. Everybody else is over here doing stuff. Bryce is uh, editing the scan grip stuff right now. And uh, so I figured I'll just set the camera up. Chris is over there doing his uh, CFO thing. My dad and Ted are getting out orders. And so now we're uh, just uh, doing our thing. How's it going? Jack Palowski, hey, I've talked to you, not it's, really talked to you. I got the, oh. the six wipers. Oh, yeah, cool. How you doing? Good. I made some for you uh, almost a year ago when you were just starting here. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I wanted to bring it to you. What do you, you got? Because you like stainless, and I do machining oh. in my garage. Oh, shoot. Oh, man, that's sick. I know you'd like it because it's 303 stainless. Heck, yeah. There's another stand in case you want to put on a little small. Piece okay, so that would be a... If you want a little one. That is sweet. Thank you. Isn't that nice? That is awesome. <laughs> This is Lori. Hey, Lori, how are you? This is Matt Mormon. This is Matt, the, the movie star. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're always ordering stuff and they're shipping it because you're too lazy to come down here. Is that you? you? Know, yeah. I was wondering that because I'm getting like bead maker all the time. Can I just yeah. come here and get it? Yeah, just come any day. We're usually here 8 to 4 30 ish, you know, okay. something like that. And a lot of times I'm here on Could Saturday. I, do I do it online with order line of line? Or? You just come in and, you know, grab it off the shelf and we run can. The car or something? Yeah, we can run it. We can okay. cash, whatever works. But yeah, card's fine. That's what I was wondering. Because, you know, I'm yeah. just down the street. It'll save you 20 bucks in shipping every time. That is sweet. It's nice to get it right away. I love that. Can you make these in quantity? You no, know, don't even ask. <laughs> you knew I was going to ask that, didn't you? The M3. I, I found a place, the Goodyear place, right up here, right by Home Depot, has a darn has the proper hunter lift. So I've been searching around everywhere to try to find someone to go do my darn uh, my darn balancing, mounted balancing. Because the problem is most um, are, are alignment. Most alignments they do it's a it's a wheel clamp. This is just soap. It's not. I a, worked in a dealership all my life and I know all about doing that. Yeah. That ain't no good. Right. And so you need they have the rubber one, the ones that clamp the tires, and it has a rubber face and just sits on the face yeah, of the how wheel. True is the tire though? The rim is. Well, true. what happens is is the tire clamp is just holding it. There's a there's a rubber face that that fixes oh, the to the off, yeah so okay. so all the settings are off of the face of the wheel and so it they're super accurate yeah. it's actually more accurate than the uh, than the clamp ones which is which is cool she's gonna take a picture yeah that's I fine like I'm going to movie stuff I know he thinks you're a movie star <laughs> 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 yeah. you catch him and catch us in action yeah I like the d d nib I like to think I have uh, added a lot of people in the world that. Now do this. <laughs> do this crazy denibbing business. They're having a, a Macan uh, party, a launch party Friday night. I don't know if you, you probably ain't going to go there. No. I'm going to go there just to see what the launch party is. In Ocala or Orlando? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to go up there and get my money back. I put a uh, $5,000 deposit down on my, uh, what, yeah, the RS, and they never, I never got one. They don't like it. They, they just got a silver one, and it's, it's gone. Yeah, see, that's that's the problem. Like, I, I don't understand why they won't take care of me. I'm like, I, I bought a couple of cars there, and they give my, they pretend like they take my money, and I, I put. You bought a car though. Yeah, I bought. Um, well, you had a GTS. Well, I bought my M3 there. Yeah, I bought my M3. I tried to buy my GT3 there, and then that's when my blue one showed up in Orlando. Yeah. Um, and um, what else did I? I bought something else there, but. I'm like, look, guys, and, and I've done some videos there of some of their cars and things, and I don't know. 
Bobby just doesn't believe in social media, I guess. Uh, I, I see the video on uh, when he had the Blue GT3 talking to, to Josh. Yeah. Do you kind of cut your own throat putting it out there that the car was... No. No, it didn't, didn't hurt me at all. I mean... But it could have. I guess. I mean, there's a guy in Tampa who owns it. Either way, it. if you splice it or if you put it in, either way, it's not you a good situation. Yeah, but you know what's funny is that... Um, like a lot of people, like they know exactly where the car has been, and then they know exactly what it was. And so, um, I forget what his name is, uh, Jared. Jared owns it in, in Tampa now. He bought it from the guys up in, uh, in Ohio and shipped it, sh or drove it down from Ohio. Okay. So, yeah, it didn't hurt me at all. So, you know, being public, yeah. you know, whatever. It's. it's, it's the, the, I, I've received so many positive residuals from it versus the, the slight negatives that, you know, that I you know, might get from sharing my house and stuff like that. You know, that freaks a lot of people out. I said, well, you know, someday it might come back to bite me, but well, as, as of this point. The dealer did it. Yeah. Not you. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I'm surprised that they would even want to. That's what I would want to do if, if, if it was me in that situation. I'd probably splice it because... Yeah. You're not putting that car back together. To to the yeah, so yeah. The well, the only the only thing I the only thing to say is though is every time everything I take it anything apart on the GT3 is it goes back together so easily. Yeah, the lineup, but as far as I mean, you're taking headliners down all the Yeah, and and the other the thing that freaked me out was he's like, well, a lot of the like the Molex like they would have to actually put individual pins like hundreds and hundreds of them. And so, and Chubb would have paid for it. They would, they'd pay for whatever. They say whichever you want to do, the Chubb insurance. But I looked into that. Uh, that's pretty expensive insurance. But for you, it paid off. It can be. Uh, it just depends. It really, for me, it wasn't all that much more than uh, Progressive was. Yeah. Um, because all my cars now, but now that all the cars are stated value. But you know, the, my home home insurance is kind of expensive. But I have it, it becomes more economical when you put on like, you know, I have like a policy for my cameras and computers, and I have a policy or an a, a, I guess it'd be a rider on the policy for the um, uh, what was it uh, jewelry, you know, and they're pretty cool. So let's say you had fifty thousand dollars worth of jewelry. Well, you just carry like fifteen thousand in insurance blanket and then if you lost one like a watch or someone stole your watch or something then they that you Keep the as long as they didn't steal all of it at the same time yeah you know, then you're you're safe Maybe yeah some nice wheels yeah they're pretty nice they're brand new can you get them in black well, i have them in black the, the black ones are on the car okay. but the the blue m3 doesn't do doesn't look as good with black this is a little bit too light. These are just the OE factory spec wheels. I wanted a set of these to have these. Um, and the ones that came on the car were all chipped and all jacked up. Mm -hmm. They're only like, they're like 2,500 bucks for a set. So they're not crazy expensive. Ain't bad. Yeah. So um, I wanted a brand new fresh set with a fresh set of tires because, you know, I'm always changing stuff. And so I like to have a set of factory wheels with good tires that I can go back to when I'm, you know, swapping. It's just what I like to do, and then so I'm gonna I'm coating them, and I'll put, I'm gonna put mineral spirits and clean do up the tires. Do you have any squeaking issue with those ceramic brakes? Oh yeah, be ready for Am it. Am I gonna like be sorry? No, it's a badge of honor. <laughs> so here's what'll happen uh, when you first get them the first. 1500 miles or so they'll really squeak and you're gonna think they're broken uh, and then they'll kind of wear in uh, one thing that helps the carbon ceramics is when you blow it out with the, with the pressure washer mm -hmm. so if you um if you keep them clean because what happens is the ceramic dust from the pads kind of cakes up and gets in like all the little because what squeaks are the clamps the clips that hold the pads in mm -hmm. and so you just have to blow out you just blow it out all the time with the pressure washer and it, it won't be too bad and so what you'll find is toward the end of your wash cycle let's say you go two weeks and you drove the car you know a couple hundred miles by the end of that two weeks you'll get more squeaks than you wash the car and you'll blow out all that dust and that'll be fine but you'll, they'll quiet down a little bit after, after a few thousand miles. And I wouldn't, if I were you, I wouldn't follow the, the recommended break-in. I'd just drive it. Just go. You won't have the car long enough to even matter. I mean, it's, it's going to be 200,000 miles that that, you know, break-in. Because Porsche says, what is it's 2,000 miles or something crazy. Yeah, I've seen this. Like, I'll never put that on. 
Right. Yeah. yeah. He'll be, it'll be three years before you even, you know, go to red line. So what I normally do is drive around for a hundred miles and then I don't drive super hard anyway. And then I just drive, you know, drive. If I want to go to red line, I go to red line. So I don't know, I wouldn't follow the stupid break-in procedures on any of these cars. I did, I used to. And then I finally realized I'm never going to have a car more than 15,000 miles anyway, so what's the point? I got 700 on my 18. Now. Right. I've had it just over a year now. But I'm, I, gotta, I, I, gotta, I can't be having anything happen to that car because the deal's done. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't take that chance. I love, uh, in many ways, I like the Carrera S better than the GT3. You know. I'm gonna like that little nub for a shifter, though. I really like my shifter. <laughs> you manually use that shift the PDK, yeah, yeah. Well, you do too, right? I mean, oh it's yeah, nice, it's nice probably eight, yeah, eighty percent of the time. The only time if I'm really on it, then I'll, you know, I'll use the paddles. But eighty percent of the time when I'm driving around town, I'll just use the darn, you know, you just kind of get accustomed to it. I guess you just gotta get used to it because nobody's putting sticks in their cars anymore. Yeah. I wonder. Um, I'm going to try to get one of the new GT4s, I think. So I'm going to get a Corvette next Are you? for a really short period of time. You know, I really wish I would have known it when I, when I had the last 17 Vipers because you would have got a blast. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a monster car. Yeah, I've never driven a Viper. I haven't driven a lot of cars, largely because I don't want to know what I'm missing, you know? Yeah, I know. That's why I don't want to drive a GT3. Yeah, yeah, that'll <laughs> that'll mess you up. I have to take you for a spin. All right, we're gonna take off. You sure? You can hang out as long as you want. Okay. Well, thank you so if, much if, for that. Yeah, yeah. If you ever need any, you know, small welding or any of that, yeah, uh, something machined, yeah, threaded or something, do oh, all that stuff. Well, anytime you know you want to come get stuff or just okay. stop by once yeah. a month or something and come check it out. I mean, that's the whole point of this. I mean, I get people coming from all over the world. The whole point of this is to have the option for people to just come and that's what I want to build. I want to buy, you know, 100, 150 acres around here and build a place where it's open, open door policy. Come in and, uh, you know, if I'm in the middle of the video, go grab a chair, pull up and yeah. hang out. That's what I want. Well, it seems you know? like it's happening too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about an option on your website and on the store to wear pickup? Is it yeah. confusing? Well, the... It should be simple, but the code that has to be written to do that across a thousand products is really funky. Okay. Uh, and so what I'm going to have to do is uh, we're going to put store hours on there. Uh, and so and that, so I'm going to revamp the returns and the, um, the about page uh, to let people know that, hey, you know, we're here. Open door policy. Come on in. Your door to come in? Or yeah, because it's kind of funky over there because, you know, like, I got two guys. Well, I got two guys that I had to pack in the entryway because I don't know where to put them. So uh, at some point, we're going to have a massive facility, but right now we're, you know, we're just doing it. See, Lori, this is what being obsessed is about. See how all the bottles are in line? Yeah. Facing it? I it's, do the same thing. It's super inefficient to do that, but I, you know, I make Ted it line them nice. up. Yeah. And it's in videos all the time, and I want to see it. Yeah. It was my dream to have 100 gallons of Adam's car soap, you know, and now I got it right there. So, nice. and then all the tools and the lift and every part and piece, everything that I can this think of. This is the way to go. Yeah, I use this thing for everything, all yeah, kinds of stuff. Especially if you're going to build a garage and you, keep, and you yeah. sink it down and now you're flat, you ain't got to be yeah. driving on top of it. It's just, yeah, the, the recess it would be key. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be doing that in the new, you know, whenever I build something. But you got to get this to go farther up though, right? Taller? Yeah, well it comes up this high. This one. But if you put it in the ground. You lose, you lose six it. inches, yeah. Yeah, because mine, you know, I'm 6'2", and so I'm like, it's like I have to do one of these. Just enough to be annoying. Yeah. You know, we're with it here. It's still better than being on the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, otherwise you get a crazy headache. All right. All right. Well, nice good, to meet you. Good to meet you. Thanks okay, for coming too. by. Nice to meet you. you. Make sure you send him down here. When he's bored or bothering I'm you, send him down here to come hang out. Or some of your videos, which are all about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. All right. That's what it's all about, man. I love this. Love this this chosen life path. I don't even like to call it a career path. Just life. Meet all kinds of cool people. All right, so working through. Set this aside. Put this up here. I tell you what, man, this darn lift. I get more 
use out of this lift doing other stuff than I do using it. Although I do have cars on it all the darn time. Shoot, even if I, like I did the radar detector, I put it on the lift so I didn't have to bend over. Anyway, as I was saying, the, the M3 is at the alignment shop. I found a place right up the street. Uh, so it's getting aligned uh, with the same exact wheel and tire combo. So these are, uh, these are 255, 35, 19 front to 75, 35, 19 rear. I decided to follow Dynan's recommendation. You know, I've always tried to squeeze more, um, you know, more meat on the tires. Try to try to get a little bit more contact patch. So the, the problem with doing that is then you, when you end up with that big of a stagger, you end up understeering a lot and you lose a lot of the balance of the car. You know, that's why a lot of guys will go square. A square setup, you're, you end up with better balance overall. But then on a car like this, you end up a little bit heavier steering than I'd like and trying to squeeze like 275s or 285s in the front. You can do it, but I'm just not interested in that. And so I'm doing 255, 275 combo uh, is the, what I'm, what I'm going to be doing on these cars because I, I don't have a traction issue. So trying to squeeze 295s on it really doesn't make sense. What's up, bro? What's up? You going to come help me? No, I'm see, I'm cutting these little nibs off. What's up, BBG? What's up, buddies? What are you guys doing? Hi, guys. Hi, Dallas. How are you? Hey, Dallas. How's it going, man? We're playing with some car stuff, shooting some videos. <laughs> Can you guys say hi to the camera? Hi, camera. Hi, so, camera. Uh, the alignment specs, I think I did negative one and a half front, negative 1.8 rear. I think the caster is six and a half. I forget what the toe is. So I found my mounting and balancing place, which is in Ocala, which is right by my shrink, which is helpful. Uh, discount tire, you saw me shoot a video not too long ago on that. And now I have an alignment place right up the street. And so I, 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 I did my foolproof system, which is try to find the guy who has a car outside. So there's a guy up there uh, who has a, um, has a Corvette like a, C, a C6 Corvette. So I asked who he was. Turns out he's always modifying his cars and stuff. So I found, I asked him uh, if I could, you know, could tell him what I wanted to do. Showed him all the alignment specs, tell him what I really want. Palm them a hundo, always palm a hundo right up front. And I always, I'm super up front with it. I say, look, I'm trying to bribe you to be my friend. <laughs> and so I give him a hundred spot and I give him another 50 when I pick up the car. And then the key here, if you want to go back, is you know, they're generally going to charge you more, especially if you show up with a nice car and, and if it's out of the norm of the shop. Uh, and so no matter what the bill is, you don't complain, you just pay it. Uh, and then that's how, you, that's how I've always got special treatment. And so now, you know, I have the guy's cell phone number. He wants to come down and take the Jeep, you know, get a ride in the GT3, the whole thing. So that's, so we did the 1M yesterday. And the alignment specs are the same on both cars because it's essentially the same suspension. So I'm doing a full stiff on the uh, on the adjustable dyna sway bar on the front. You know, I got my ride heights all set up. He actually adjusted the ride height because the, the the one the right rear was a little too low, and uh, alignment was way off on the one M. So we did the one M yesterday, M3 today. Get the steering wheel straightened out, and uh, yeah, good to go. So I'm going to take the black wheels off the M3 and put these on. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, the black wheels are cool. Yeah, the black wheels are cool, Rye, but that car, that blue, is the blue is just a little too dark. Can we hear my light? No, it's not. What are you doing, KB? Did you guys do today? Anything fun? Yeah. yeah. Where'd you go? We went to bowling. Oh. Who won? Who won? Who won bowling? Yeah. Me. Oh, shoot. Yeah, but were you rolling with the bumpers on, or were you doing yeah, it? Yeah, we were doing with the rubbers, but I barely mm -hmm. hit them. I, I was the only one who got a strike. What you, you got? What's up, KB? I did a, I did a spare. You were throwing it right. I got a spare. You, did, you, you got, got one? No, I, did it, I did it your way. Daddy got a strike. Oh, where you do the spinner way? Yeah. yeah. You didn't do it with your fingers in I'm ter what? I'm terrible at bowling. No, you're good. You're well, in comparison to you, yeah, maybe, but... <laughs> But not, 
not anybody else. I think I'm back on the Terminator train here. What do I do with my loves? I don't know, I feel like maybe the whole mineral spirits thing is leeching my tires. I don't know. We'll see. So uh, what I like to do generally, let's just try this. I normally don't do Terminator dry. Let's try this. I like to do it with paper towel first so I don't ruin my microfiber towels completely. Yeah, I think this is probably a better way to do it. I just feel like my pearl doesn't get set up the way I like with mineral spirits. And the Terminator. I don't know. I'm making up stuff here. But both of these work. I like the idea of the Terminator. So I always prep the tires first. Since the wheels are going to have to sit here for a little while. When after I, you know, after I coat them. And then we'll take a microfiber and be a little bit more aggressive. Michelle's taking the 1M. I should be nervous. She's gonna freak out when she hears the, uh, the HREs do rub a little bit once you're backing up. I'll be putting these wheels on here this week probably, likely. Tire number one, nice and clean. Prepped for pearl after we get done with the uh, done with the wheel here. The problem is now I got Terminator juice all over the place since I'm making a mess. I normally do this in the garbage can. So I got CarPro Eraser and the eraser has been holding up. So this bottle has been holding up with no issues. Doesn't look like the... Uh, it looked like eraser was the culprit. I think I just had a bad batch of, I had a bad batch of tips. So I'll have new, I still haven't ordered them yet, but I'm gonna order a bunch of tips. We're waiting to hear back from their engineering department on why this is happening. Or the press all bottles had some tips failing because they do extensive testing on these, so they're, you know, the Germans are baffled. They're freaking out a little bit too. I like to keep them on their toes. So since these are new, I don't really see the need to do anything uh, crazy from a prep perspective. There's no real need to, uh, to clay these. What I'm just basically doing is prepping it with the eraser, and I'm gonna go straight to CSL which you've now seen me do a bunch. So what else is going on? So my, my current theme is I need to slow down to speed up. Meaning I was getting a little crazy. I'm looking at like 150 acres and I was ready to roll. And so I'm gonna slow it down a bit. And what'll happen is it'll probably happen faster I take my time. What's up, man? That's me. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Hi, Just hey, Rohan. Nice to meet you. You too. Hello. How are you? This is my daughter. Nice to see you. you. Guys coming up from South Florida? Yes. Cool. You got some uh, some cool products. Yes, sir. I'll clean this off and we'll set them up and maybe you can school me on them. I'm working on them there. It's a company called Pressall. Hmm. So I'm working on getting them to make them so that they're good enough okay. for us. Looks like it leaks back here. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of little quirks, little issues that we're working through. Like for instance, uh, some of the tips have separated. Uh, the, the issue with them, it doesn't atomize, but the last quarter turn. And so if you look at how much thread, oh, there's yeah. a massive amount of thread. And so if I do this, it'll shoot all the way across the room. And so we need it to, I want it to start atomizing here, mm -hmm. but it doesn't atomize. So even here, I'm the straight oh, wow. stream. So I have to go all the way to the very end, which then puts pressure on the tip. Mm -hmm. 
in order to atomize. Oh, okay. They're double pull, but something's going on here with this particular one where it's leaking out the back. Oh, okay, so it's prism is going in and going out. Yeah. Oh, wow. Let's see, there's a drip. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. There's something leaking in the tip. But that's part of the, the discovery process. So I, the, 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 the proper size is 750s. This one isn't as ergonomic. If you hold these, these are really comfortable as they're weighted. But that's a, th that's a one liter. So you really don't want a one liter. We really want a, um, a 750. Okay. I sold out the 750s in minutes. Wow. And so then these, these black ones, there's a black and red version. They have a, uh, a weight, really, really high quality, very similar to Quasar, but just more ergonomic, a little funny looking. These would never be practical like for a product line because these are like, this is $18 a piece or $17 a piece. But if they last and they work, then if I can get some of the issues figured out and they become chemical resistant, uh, basically what I did with these is I asked the crowd to fund this. Meaning I paid for them, I brought them here, I did all the work to get them. And uh, what I'm asking people is don't return them, don't ask for replacement parts. If you want to early adopt and buy one, so I sold a couple of thousand of them. If you want to early adopt and buy one, they're just, they're just, just know going into this, you're helping me mm -hmm. by, and so we're going to have a crowdsourced uh, Google Docs, and I'm going to provide that to press all because Germans don't like to, they don't like to make changes. They think that what they made is the best, mm -hmm. and they don't want, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to do anything else, and so I'm, I've asked the audience, the crowd, to help me fund this. And don't bother me, and don't call me, and don't you know complain. I'm like I, I haven't had time to test these bottles for ten years, so we can get ten years worth of testing done in a few months by getting a couple thousand out there in the world. So that's the plan. So I come up with these cockamamie schemes all the time, <laughs> and uh, this is how we how we do it. So what I'm looking for. I'm always looking at product lines to add to my mix. Yeah, I've almost no 99% of it. I do some people stop by here, but I'm in the middle of nowhere. No one lives here. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I had a guy just come by a few minutes ago and drop something off, but uh, he actually made this thing for me, which is pretty sweet. So, I made this out of wow, aluminum. That is nice. Yeah, it's cool. Really nice. Yeah, so I was some guy made that for me, you know, that watched the videos. It's really been a, a phenomenon that... It's like the ultimate, ultimate shot. Yeah, well now we're, you know, the problem is, is this, you know, we're just what they're doing, you know, we're probably gonna do about 10 million in sales out of this little place this year, which is incredible. Yeah, so we're, you know, we're, you know, and I'm just, you know, selling a bunch of random stuff. My greater vision, like, is still growing, like mm -hmm. I'm still building out the ideas, the product lines. Mm -hmm. I don't have an interior package yet. I just okay. launched my lighting package. Or Bryce is in there building it right now. We're launching that. You know, with Scan Grip and Phoenix and, you know, different, you know, polishing lighting. Mm -hmm. um, some guy just sent this cabinet to me to test the doing are wooden cabinets viable. Um, I don't think wooden cabinets are viable. There's a piece that goes over this, so that's what it looks like that. But the, um, you know, something like this could be cool for certain garages but you know I'm a metal cabinet guy so you know I have all this all these really really bright people that follow me on YouTube and then they help a lot of times they help come up with ideas and like somebody told me about this company Twin Bush and now I've kind of put them on the map they can't keep up so you stock these I don't oh. th they stock them there but I own them so I own inventory of some lifts uh, but this goes up to six feet you know six and a half feet yeah which is cool you put like um... jack pads. Mm -hmm. I'll put a little jack pad on here, and then the you know, car comes up. Yeah, Scissor lifts are great because they're 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 easy to put the car on. You know, everybody thinks a two post is the best lift. A scissor lift is the best, especially for a detail. Yeah, two but, poses gets in the way. Yeah, you can't even open the darn door. You know, and a four post is obviously doesn't work. Four posts are good for storage, mm -hmm. but people think that a two post you can't access the car. But I mean, you've got three feet in between, you can do the whole exhaust, you can change brake lines, you can do anything, you can drop a transmission, mm -hmm. and you don't have to deal with all the bull crap, 
and it's, it's safer because all the pressure straight down, it's not pulling in. You know, like a, like a two post, I mean, you've got to have really stout concrete, and otherwise you, you run a risk. Yep, yep, it really doesn't even need to be bolted down. The only reason to bolt it is so that it doesn't move, yeah. you know, when you come and drive up on it. Like when I drove my Raptor on it, the Raptor pushed it forward, and okay. that's when I decided to bolt it down. Because okay. yeah. I, I like this lift, but my, this, I've always rented. Yeah. Because I didn't want to mess with the concrete, mm -hmm. because I know, you know, it's, I'm not there permanent or for a long term yep. as I grow and I change. Well, one thing you can do with these is, you know, like the uh, the gym, the really thin, like rubberized gym mats, mm -hmm. like you go to like a regular gym. If you put that underneath it, then it won't slide. Okay. Yeah, so you can do that. And these things are, they're just like 3600 bucks. They're not crazy expensive. They have a mid-rise version that comes to almost this exact height here. Mm -hmm. uh, the mid-rise is, um, I think, like 1800 or 1900 okay. or something like that. It's actually cheaper than what I have. I yeah. have a one of those scissor lift that lifts from the middle. Yeah. One of those matco. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, these are a little more stout and they pulled up a little bit better. I think I might have messed this up. I sprayed uh, stoners on there and I'm going to want to put a towel down. What you have with, um, with the products is that, you know, for one, they're priced higher than most products on, in the same category on the market. Doesn't matter to me. I'm priced higher than everybody in the market, so. Uh, that won't be an issue. And one of the reasons why I wanted to come here is because if a person is using it the right way, it you'll get better results. Everything else. Okay, so let's do this. So you'll school me, and then I'll make a video later. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm camera. Okay. <laughs> All right, time to get coding. So first, I got to get some gloves. So I'm going to do this one wheel at a time. This is uh, a day later, almost the same time as when I quit yesterday. Actually, no, it's way later. It's only like 3 o'clock now. But uh, I had the Rohan from Angel Wax come, give me a schooling on the entire Angel Wax line. So I'll be playing with some of that stuff. Um, what else did I do? Designed three different garages yesterday after I left off with you guys. Uh, and so now today we're going to do some coding. I want to put the center cap on. So... I didn't order these. You saw these, saw, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I posted this earlier, but these are a uh, weighted BMW. These are an OE BMW center cap. I don't know about all this, about this whole spinny thing, but the idea is, I'll show you in a second, I didn't realize that they were weighted. I just thought they spun. So the idea is when we lift the wheel, the BMW is always facing up. So no matter where we go, it ends up facing upward. So I don't know. I guess I guess it's okay. I didn't or I don't even know that I ordered these, but these are called floating center caps. I thought I just ordered regular center caps. But apparently I ordered floating. So we're gonna try them. They do kind of poke out a little bit more. I've already wiped this down with the racer yesterday, so we should be good to go. And for me, wheels are never as critical just want to get some stuff on it. So I made this transition to doing Crystal Serum Light and XO on my wheels. I just like it better. I don't, I don't like the C5 as much. And for those of you who feel as though you need absolutely have to have the wheel specific coating, you can certainly do that. I do have that. And this is just, a, I got a bunch of CarPro suede, suede applicators. So I'm just gonna continue using this one. Or I, there are suede, I got like a big assortment of bigger suede uh, towels. I don't know why I bought them. I bought them back when you needed to level the coating with a suede, or the recommendation was to level it with suede. And so I've had them forever, and so I've been cutting them up and creating my own little applicator towels. Just kind of get this thing moving here. So I'll have to really stay organized on these gray because I can't really see the coating very well. Oh, so let's see, what do we do today? So today I uh, was helping with a air compressor design 
And then I did a video of me driving and talking about the RS exhaust, the AWE exhaust that I just put on. And Ryan and I did that. We had a huge amount of products come in. So I didn't really do anything there, but what was I doing? I was doing something, something important. Bryce and I worked on the 1M. Again, if you're not familiar, I'm gonna be raffling or giving away the 1M in the month of July and August will be when I'll be raising money by you buying shirts, hats. I have an Obsessed Garage coin uh, and uh, you can sign up for the membership program. So Bryce and I were talking about what that's gonna look like. So I need to create some content this weekend on the 1M, go take some pictures. Uh, if you haven't applied yet, apply for the OG position. I've got a media analyst. I'm also looking for somebody to come work in the warehouse and part-time. And I'm working and looking for somebody to come and part-time do some camera work. Uh, basically follow me around so that I can create content for the membership platform. Go to Obsess Garage Facebook page, the business page, and you can apply for a position if you're interested. The various, various salaries and hourly depending on what the other position is. So I've been working on that. And so the, the basic concept of the idea behind doing the membership platform is to allow you to uh, have some form of discount and so it'll be 240 bucks a year you get 10 percent off and free shipping on anything in the store with the exception of saber and with the exception of free shipping on sonic so you'd have to pay shipping for that freight and uh, air compressors air compressor freight that'll be starting here july 1st I'll be making some videos about it and also it'll be launched on obsessgarage.com. There will be a, a page you'll see where it'll explain everything you need to do to either enter to win the 1M. The 1M is turning out really nice. Either enter to win it, United States and Canada, Hawaii, Alaska, everywhere except for Quebec should be eligible. I haven't gotten my final bonding approval yet, but we should have it hopefully in time. I'll let you know. Heading to the mountains next week on Thursday. I'm shipping my car up there and uh, meeting it in North Atlanta. So I'm flying to Atlanta. I'm gonna get the car and then drive the rest of the way up to the mountains. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm excited because I'm back to being able to drive clear again after my tooth my whole tooth saga so i'm feeling really good about that i haven't done any really good driving since last october so i'll be i'm gonna be sure to capture all kinds of video i got some ideas of some videos i'm gonna make i'm pumped about the lighting stuff too in fact i'll grab my phoenix light it's really hard to see on this gray looks good i'm gonna leave any high spots and I'm doing the uh, CSL right now, and then I'll let it cure overnight, or probably over multiple days. Come back and do the do some EXO following. I'm not in any rush, and you know, I have the black wheels on the M3, so I'm not in any rush. Uh, Sean and I we ordered tight. I ordered a set of a Titan Seven TS5s for the M3. So these will be the main the base wheels for the M3 because the black wheels that are on it right now are gonna go with the 1M. So again, if you win the 1M, you're getting a set of HRE R101 lightweights, which are freaking awesome. And, uh, and a set of uh, OE GTS wheels in black. So you'll be able to swap or sell or do whatever you wanna do, whoever wins the car. So if you like the HREs, you could sell the GTS wheels or you can keep both and swap them like I was planning on doing. So I'll have these and then a set of Titan 7s. If the Titan 7 offsets are good, which I think they are, and if they look like I think, 
I might, so I got them in uh, the, like the gunmetal finish, titanium silver they call it. And so if, if I really like them, I'll probably buy a set of black and then I'll have three sets of wheels that I can swap. You know, just depending on my mood. The only problem with that is then I gotta put them somewhere. So I decided, shoot, I gotta make those calls here today. But I decided I wanna get a GT4, the new one. So I'm gonna chase that down. So the plan here is to get the 1M raffled in the next two months. Hopefully in the next two months, get an allocation for a GT4, order that, which will probably take six or eight months to get. And then in between the 1M and the GT4, get a Z06 and then raffle that. I'll have the GT4 hopefully raffle the M3 so I can, I really want to buy that, uh, if they'll sell it to me, the Enthusiast Auto Group, they have a 4,000 mile manual single hump um, Lime Rock car. In between, I might do Dine and Stroker on the M3, this, this M3, the blue one, and then raffle that sucker if you guys, if, the, if you guys respond well to this. And just build really high quality Mormon spec cars and make them available. All right, so here's wheel number one. So let me set this aside and let's clean up the tire on wheel number two. We won't dress the tires until afterward. The concept of the, of the membership program, we're calling it inside the hex, is to really give you more inside info it's really gonna be kind of the business building part. And so what I intend to do is I wanna hire somebody to follow me around here every day. Every day that I'm in the garage, I have somebody that's just on call the entire time. If I'm here for eight hours, they're just on call with holding the camera, capturing every little moment in between. And then we'll eventually teach them how to, how to edit and break that down. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve up the most specific the most i guess detailed stuff will be put up on the membership program but we'll still do a lot of vlogging on the you know on the regular free youtube channel as well so i'm going to provide just more content i'm not taking any content away from the youtube channel i'm just going to provide the more specific stuff that i don't feel is comfortable sharing you know with the world and I only want to share with the people who really care to know, which I think is going to be fun. And I think some people are going to enjoy it. And it's going to be 60 bucks for that. If you do sign up for the, the Hex Plus, which is the free shipping and because you're buying lots of stuff from the store, free shipping, priority shipping. So if you sign up for that, you'll get the content as well. So you get both. I'm back on Terminator. Set of mineral spirits. Um, have you ever made the Stripe account for accepting credit card purchase? Mm -mm. No. Through the membership, you either do PayPal or you can do Stripe, and Stripe is like a credit card processing. So okay. It's like a one percent fee charge or something like that. All right. Yeah. So that way they can just use a credit card rather than having to have PayPal. Yeah. And we can do it through bold? Yeah. Okay, sweet. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'm in. Let's do that. Okay. I'm doing pretty well on my eating with my lady. I'm not doing so well on the working out part. So I need to get my crap together. I've just been having so much fun here. It's like I wear myself out every day here at the garage. I'm gonna go home and take a nap. Gotta stop doing that. And get this really clean since we're not gonna be claying or doing any kind of special deconning. Just wanna make sure we get our coating bonded. These wheels are gonna do really well with CSL. Motor's gonna be shooting off these suckers. So what I also intend to do, this is part of the reason why I need another person, is I intend to take the greater content. So when I'm making all these, 
long format videos and extracting the fruit from it and then driving that out to a new audience. You know, those of you who aren't watching this or don't, haven't been part of it. So that's part of what my vision is for, you know, outreach to others that don't know what Obsessed Garage is. And so I'm gonna do that through the main Facebook group. I wanna, I wanna tell the story. There's a lot of people in the main Facebook group, the Obsessed Garage, you know, private group that don't know who the heck I am or what Obsessed Garage even is. And so I want to have weekly content for there. And so the main reason I want to have somebody follow me around all day is not for the vanity of it. It's to capture the, the fruit, capture those moments that we have so many cool things that happen here that I'm not able to capture. So I'd like to be able to do that, to capture all of it. And so in the Facebook group, what I'll probably do is give you a short form version of what will be in the membership program. If you, and if you want to watch the whole thing, then you go and become a member. I'm sure some people won't like that, but I don't care. I think the key is just to keep creating. That's the current plan. I'm sure it'll change. My, my theme right now is that I'm slowing down to speed up. So slow down to speed up. What that means is rather than getting ahead of myself and buying some massive property that I don't really have time to develop anyway, we're just gonna rough it here, build culture, build the team. So when we do need to make the move, one, I'll have better cash reserves so we can weather whatever economic storm comes. And then I'll have the people in place to be able to pull off the move efficiently. So I've procured some storage units and we're just gonna have to deal with fighting through, you know, moving stuff in and out of here all the time as I build inventory, the proper inventory to keep up with demand. And so the whole point of the membership program is to share with you the process of building this. I find that stuff more interesting when people share, you know, their business than their personal, than the cars. And I think many of you are probably that way too. Of course, the risk of doing that is it opens me up to people who don't like to see other people succeed, but I can't think about that. Yeah, these wheels are fun to coat, not very fun to clean. So I'm gonna do, do some wash and talk here this weekend. M3 definitely needs to be washed. I'll probably, yeah, I should wash the GT3 so it's prepped and ready to go for Thursday. So, and then I'd like to wash the 1M. I'm gonna have to wash the 1M because I need to create a bunch of 1M content for the 1M page on OG.com so I can hopefully make sure I don't lose my shirt. I think I'm like 90 grand into the, <laughs> the 1M. Still waiting on some parts, Still waiting on the headlights. I don't know if they're gonna get here. They're, he's been having a hard time getting into clear customs. Uh, so I've got 1M headlights and the uh, front lip. Waiting the front lip as well. So I can pull and align the bumper. And I'm waiting on the rest of the center console. It's not absolutely necessary to swap the whole center console. Uh, I would just like to. Yet I'm treating this car as if it were mine and I would keeping it the rest of my life like I would any car that I'm messing with. So the car won't be perfect, but it'll be really excellent. I think. So it's a car that you're going to want. If you have any interest in a 1M, even if you don't, if you can win it for, you know, buy four shirts, a hundred bucks or 120 bucks, and you got a one in a thousand or one in a couple thousand chance to win, those are pretty good, pretty good odds. I mean, I'm, I'm not much of a gambler. I'm not a gambler at all, but I would take a, I'd take a flyer on that. And I'm going to ask you to help support me here and I'll do more of it. You know, I've had to invest quite a bit of money to get this thing. So even though I'm 90 grand in the car, I'm pretty heavily into having to develop the site, develop the membership program, do all these things to get it set up. And then all, you know, all the humans, Bryce has been working on it a ton. So I'm glad I did the active tune on the 1M. I like it, it's doing well. 
car feels good. Alignment's done. I got to drop it off tomorrow because they did the alignment, but the steering wheel was off. The car feels night and day between having a proper alignment and proper tune, proper wheels and tires. Oh man, the car is amazing. You can see all, the, all those orders over there, hundreds and hundreds of orders going out. I'm also, man, you know, I, I was really having a hard time there for a while. I'm just so much better mentally. I got so much more present. I just feel good. So good. It's been a long road the last year or so in my transition to living this dream life. And I felt trapped inside of my own head, even though I loved the life. I just was struggling with fear and phobias and I was on my way to become, you know, Howard Hughes in my own home theater, just stuck there. I didn't want to, I didn't want to end up that way. What, I was always avoiding doing a lot of the things I wanted to do, which is not a good way to live. All right, we're at wheel number two. So let's do an experiment. We did those two with Terminator. Let's do these two with Mineral Spirits. Make sure I'm grounded. Just build up so much static in here because of the humidity. Some of my favorite things to do: just get my tires, new tires, dialed in. Seems like I've been doing a lot of this lately. Getting all the nibs off, removing all the junk. Sell any Krenzels yet? Two of them are paid for. Sweet. Three or four of them are in process. Guys are we have some open box Krenzlas. By the time this video comes out, they'll probably be gone. So, you know, they come from either returns or some small repairs. One of a couple of them were, it's just the box. The boxes got wet, the original boxes. So they're just in an, an aftermarket box. So we'll see. We'll see, those should probably be gone by the time you guys watch this video. But hit us up. And by us, I mean Chris. Chris at obsessedgarage.com. I'm getting away from all that. It doesn't really matter if they email me or you, you're getting it anyway. Mineral Spirits does feel like it's a little quicker. But I'm just interested. I, I feel like it's drying it out. I feel like my pearl isn't taking as well as it does when I clean the tires with Terminator. So I'm going to answer that question by trying it. So these are 275, 35, 18, or 19, sorry, not 18. I want the old scent back, the old Car Pro Eraser scent. Now it's a bit more perfumey. It's just like, it's like kind of pungent. It wasn't that way before. Yeah, so I think the Titan 7 wheels are in stock. So I think Sean's gonna get them for me. Sean from PSI. So if you need HREs, Brembo's, you know, anything BMW related, call up Sean. I don't know, someday I could say I could see he and I doing Porsche BMW parts. As of right now, I got my hands full with flooring and lighting, and I just did a whole huge project on I'm gonna be doing MSS plus cabinets. So as of right now, I'm not allowed to have MSS Plus on the website, so we're working on that. So I am an MSS Plus dealer for Sonic, but they're just not on the site. So if you need it, please call me and I'll source it for you, help you design it. I've figured out exactly what tools you'll want. So I actually took the catalogs, I cut out every possible tool set combination. I cut it all out and then I laid it out on the table and mixed and matched to figure out what the best setup is. I probably, so I'm, you know, eight or 10, I'm probably about 20 total hours worth of obsessing over which, which one's which and why. So if you're gonna buy some Sonic stuff, call me, email me, actually email me. I don't like it when you call me. I don't wanna talk to you on the phone. You don't want to talk to me on the phone either. So now if it's absolutely necessary, we can, but if I have the choice, let's just message back and forth. 
something uh, I've been listening a lot of. You might want to check this out. Check out the, the Naval, N-A-V-A-L podcast. The guy is just brilliant. You know, if you're working a job and you're talking about, you know, the, the same stuff that everybody else talks about and you're trying to figure out why the heck you're miserable, you know, just because you're working a job doesn't mean you have to be miserable. I mean, not doing this crazy entrepreneur life is not for everybody. In fact, it's not for most people. But if you're having a, a struggle with what's going on, Naval is just super sharp. Just, I'm telling you, just listen to it. If you don't get it, then you'll know that you're not cut out for entrepreneurship. But if it's making sense to you, not only making sense, but resonating with you, the, the guy's message is he believes exactly what I believe. The disadvantage of using a big, bigger applicator like this is you end up using more product. I have to use up this bottle anyway, so we got plenty to get through. You only do crystal serum light, we only do one layer. I'll let it cure, and then tomorrow we'll add the XO and the Carpo Pearl. I got a bunch of cameras that I need to sell Canon 80D, a bunch of Canon lenses, my GH, Panasonic GH5, and to sell all that stuff. Hit me up if you want any of that. I've got a 10 to 22 millimeter, I think it's an F3.5. I've got the uh, 17 to 55 millimeter EFS uh, F2.8, ADD, GH5, the 12 to 24, I think it is, or maybe 12 to 35 millimeter Panasonic, whatever their high end lens is. Batteries and all that crap, battery grip. I'm broke for both of them, so hit me up if you want those. I gotta sell that stuff. So that's about what I have going on. So what I'm gonna do here, the same process. You've seen me do this a bunch. So go check out Bryce's Miata or check out the uh, black satin wheels I did on the 1M. So I've done this <laughs> half a dozen times in the last few months. But what I'm basically gonna do is let these cure overnight. You probably don't have to, but I'm going to let it cure overnight. And then we'll put, I'll put uh, two layers of EXO on these, and then I'll just treat them as a drying aid with bead maker as I'm going along. That's the story. But I figured rather than just sitting here bored, I'd set the camera up and chat with you about what's going on. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy.